in an Alberta school. Okay, I see bars moving on the microphone. Uh, there are 65 grade 12 students. Of these students, 23 play volleyball and 26 play basketball. And there are 31 students who do not play either sport. The Venn diagram represents the sets of students. And what you need to do is fill in the different areas on the Venn diagram. So we want the number of students who play only volleyball, the number who play only basketball, and the number who play both volleyball and basketball. So we have 65 students that we have to distribute in this diagram according to only volleyball, which will be what area? Just the, the one that's straight blue. That will be only volleyball. This area that is red is only basketball. And so what's this area here? Ones who play both, right? It's the overlap of volleyball players and basketball players. Okay, so take a few minutes. <coughs> Draw this out. Fill it in. Figure out how. And then we'll come back in a moment. So, what's the first number you're going to write in the box? 31. Where do I write it? Outside. Outside here, right? So 31 people here. Now... How many people are left to account for? 65 minus 31. 34. So I have 34 people left to account for, but I have how many people here? 49. 49. So what does that mean? <coughs> how many more people do I have? So I have... 49 people to place, but only 34, so there are 15, and where do those 15 people belong? Well, they're both sports. In the middle, they're playing both sports. Okay? So we had 49 people to account for, the volleyball and the basketball players, but we only have 34 spaces that we can fill in, or 34 numbers that we can write in there, so that means 15 must play both. Now, if there's a total of 23 playing volleyball, then how many play only volleyball? And if there's a total of 26, then how many play only basketball? 11. And 8 plus 15 plus 11 is 34, plus 31 is 65. So we've accounted for all 65 people, right? So people can only be in one place, right? You can only be in just basketball, right? So there's four places available in that diagram, right? There's neither sport, which is the 31, and that's the first number we wrote in, right? Okay, 31, don't do any sport. Then there are people who play only volleyball. We've got no way to figure that out right away. People who play only basketball, we've got no way to figure that out right away. And people who play both, and we figure that out by saying, well, okay, I've got 49 spots here, but there's only 34 spots available. So that means that 49 minus 34, or 15 people must play both. Okay, then to get the 23, then eight only, so that this will add up to 23 and 11 here, so this will add up to 26. Wait, put this down. So if you consider the students who play volleyball and the set of students who play basketball, are these sets disjoint? So are they separate? No, they're not, right? They're not separate sets. So there is some overlap there. Describe how you solve the problem. Okay, so we've already gone through how we solve the problem, right? Compare your solutions to classmates. So, you know, I was walking around and looking at them as you did it. <coughs> nope. Uh, key ideas. And so this is like pretty much all there is in 1.2. So sets that are not disjoint share some common elements. Each area of a Venn diagram represents something different, right? So there's four areas, there's four explanations, right? The elements that are in set A and set B, right? So a member of both sets. The elements that are a member of only set A, the elements that are only set B, and the elements that are in U, but not in set A or B, right? So they're part of the sample space, but they're, they, they play neither volleyball nor basketball. Is there a subset? No. What do you call the middle? Call the uh, we call it the intersection. It's the intersection of the two sets. Let's say there was a subset, like 
So a subset would generally be something that's totally inside of A. Okay. So, you know, yeah, I mean, this is the subset of people who play both, I guess. You could say it that way. But, you know, it's a subset of both sets A and B. Um, each element in a universal set appears only once in a Venn diagram. If an element occurs in more than one set, it's placed in the area where the sets overlap. Further your understanding. So here we go. Consider the following sets. U, so that's our sample space, right? The numbers 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15. We got set A and set B. We're going to illustrate these sets using a Venn diagram. Uh, it needs to be reasonably big because you're, in the, in the last one we just put the numbers, right? There are 15 who did this. Here, we're actually writing the numbers in. We're going to put the two somewhere, right? In A or B or both or neither. So we need some <coughs> space. There's A, there's B, this is U. So where does the two go? In B. In B. Where in B? So Not here? Oh, okay. So now you need to fill in the rest of it, right? Figure out where does it go. Does it belong to both A and B? Then it goes in the overlap. Six. Does it belong only to A? Then it goes in the left portion. Does it belong only to B in the right portion? If it's in neither A nor B, then it'll go outside, right? It's just in the box, but outside the circles. Six is in A and B. Well, I got to put three down first, and then four. If six is in A and B, then I'll put it there. Uh, eight goes in nine goes here. Ten. So what's what's B the set of? Even numbers. What's A the set of? Multiple of three. Is there some overlap between those? Yeah. So six and twelve are in the overlap, right? How many elements are in U? Zero. U. There's no, no, there's none like in U. This, this U. Ten. Ten is a sample space, right? Uh, so let's count these. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I've accounted for everything. So how many are in set A? Inside the circle marked A. There are five, right? Okay, so when I say set A, I'm talking about the circle A, and that does include the overlap. How many are in set A but not in set B? Okay, so now that's the three. That, now we say three, right? Because those are the ones outside of the overlap. How many are in set B? Seven. Seven? How many are in set B, but not in set A? Five. Okay. Now, if you have any questions, you gotta ask, right? Like at any time. Say, wait a second, you know, it's going too fast. How many are in set A and set B? Two. 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 Right? They're in both A and B. How many are in set A or set B? How many? Eight. How many are in A or in B? They're all in A or B, aren't they? Okay. Because there's none outside of it. So A or B is? I just counted wrong. Yeah, there's ten. So when you're counting A or B, it's in A or B or both, right? So in A, 3, or B, 5, or both, so 3 plus 5 plus 2. Or you just count everything, right? Everything that's inside the circles is A or B. Remember we talked about that yesterday. It's the inclusive use of the word or, okay? which means if I say I have a quarter or a toonie in my pocket, it's true if I have a quarter in my pocket. It's true if I have just a toonie, and it's true if I have both a quarter and a toonie. So that's the inclusive use of the word or. How many are in A prime? Three. No, there is no A prime. Yeah, there is. Five. There's 
five. It's everything that's not that's in the universal. It's not in A. Yeah, it's everything that's not in A. So it's basically <laughs> oh. one, two, three, so four, five. Universal. universal is the box. It's everything in the box that's not in A. So all I do is just kind of think of it. Just wipe out the circle A. What's left? There's five. Okay. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Okay. I'm going to erase. And we'll move down. So one down, four to go. And then section 1.3. There are 38 students in a grade 12 class. We've got these small grade 12 classes, right? So rural schools. The number of students in the drama club and the band are illustrated in the Venn diagram. Use the diagram to answer the following questions. How many students are both are in both the drama club and the band? Eight. Eight. Good. How many students are in the drama club, but not in the band? Eleven. How many students are in the band, but not in the drama club? Six. Okay. Everybody got that? Good. How many students are in the drama club? Nineteen. How many students are in the band? Fourteen. Okay. So in the drama club means you're in that blue circle. Right, even the overlap, right? You're, just, you're in that blue circle. In the band means you're in the red circle, including the overlap, so you're adding those together. How many students are in at least one of the drama club or the band? So how do we figure that out? Add them all up. So how many students are in neither the drama club nor the band? Jizz. And they go out here, right? So there, So now we have a total of 38 students in the box, right? That's our sample space, or the universe, is these 38 students. And we had accounted for 25 of them, right? So there were 13 who are neither in neither drama nor band, right? So we've got to start to learn the meaning of when we, we talk about and, what are we talking about? We talk about or, what are we talking about? We talk about not which is the prime, right, which is really not, what are we talking about? And when we're talking about neither nor, again, what are we talking about? Uh, Anna surveyed 45 students about their favorite sports. She recorded her results. So we got hockey, we got soccer, and we've got neither hockey nor soccer. Now I think the easiest way to answer this is really to do part C first, which is draw the Venn diagram, than it is to do part A, right? Like how many like hockey and soccer? I'd rather see a picture, right? Let's see what we're looking at here. Now this is one we're just putting numbers in, so we don't need huge circles, right? Because I'm not having to write like five digits in there to say, okay, so we'll call that hockey. Soccer, call this U. What's the first number I'm going to write? Where am I going to write it? 16. 16. Where am I going to write it? In the box. In the box, but outside the circles. Okay, I've taken care of 16 of the 45 students. How many students are left? 30. I was thinking it's kind of extra weight animals. Yeah, I was so, okay, how are we going to figure, what numbers are we going to use to calculate how many are left to take care of? In fact, 16 from 45, which is 29. 29. So we got 29 students to take care of, but we have 34 students. What does that mean? No, we have an extra five. And where do they go? They go in the middle. Okay. So we took care of 16 students. 45 minus 16 is 29, but we got 34 to place. So that means five of them must be counted. They're counted twice, right? They're counted once as a member of hockey. So how many just hockey are there? Nine. And how many just soccer? Nine. Okay. So now I've got 20 hockey, right? 15 plus five. I've got 14 soccer, five plus nine. And in counting those together, we've counted, you know, 20 plus 14 is 34. But there's really only 29 students, right? Because five do both. 
So now we have 15, 20, 29, 45. Right? We've got our 45 students. Okay, so how do we do this? We place the neither nor, we figure out what's left, we figure out how many, so what do we do? We said 45 minus 16 gives me 29 left, but I've got 24 plus 10, or sorry, 20, 20 plus 14 is 34. 34 minus 29 is five. That's what goes in the middle. Then 20 minus five, and 14 minus five gives us the numbers who are just fans of one sport. Okay, any questions? Yep, or I'll just ask you a question just like this. Not give you a Venn diagram to fill in, but I would expect that part of you, I mean, you could do this without the Venn diagram, right? Because you can go 45 minus 16 is 29, and I got 34 to place, which means five do both. And then if five do both, then 20 minus five is 15. Are you ask us to draw oh, for sure. You'll be drawing Venn diagrams till the cows come home on the test. Now, on the diploma, no, you won't have any Venn diagrams to draw, right? But you'll have to interpret things, and you may want to draw one. Right, again, they give you that, like the, for me, the easiest way to do this is draw the Venn diagram, right? I want to see a picture of it. I don't want to just play with numbers, because, yeah. you know, then how do I know I got it right or wrong if I'm just playing with numbers? There are, and this is really just the same problem, right? We're solving the same problem three times in a row, right? Kind of, basically. There are 55 guests at a ski resort in BC. Of these guests, 25 plan to go skiing and 32 plan to go snowboarding. There are nine guests who do not plan to ski or snowboard. How are you? Draw the Venn diagram. Fill it in, then answer the question. And I will give you a minute to do that. So what's the first number we're gonna write in there? Nine. Nine, where? Outside. Outside, okay. So we've taken care of nine of the 55 guests leaving. 46. 46. But these two together add up to 57, so that means 11 are in the middle. Okay? So how many ski only? Because these are going to add up to 25. And how many snowboard only? Because these are going to add up to 32. 14 plus 11 is 25. 26, 46, 55. Everybody's been accounted for and everybody's in only one place, right? So they have to add up, but they can't add up to more than, than what's there, right? Number five, Ryan drew the following Venn diagram. Incorrectly, there are 25 items in the universal set and four items that are not in set A or set B. Determine the number of A and B, the number of A only, the number of B only, and redraw Ryan's Venn diagram with the data you determined in part A. And I would say, let's do B first. And then do A. So what's the likely mistake that he made? So there are four that do neither. So how many people do we have to account for? Okay, and this is four of them. So how many people are left to account for? 21. But how many people do we have here? So what should we likely have? And? And? So what he did is he took the 10 people that are doing B, but he put them in B only instead of in B. And he took the 13 people that are doing A and put them in A only instead of, right? And he left the A and B blank, and he should have said, okay, wait a sec, I have 21 people here, and this is 23. That means two must be doing both leaving eight in this and 11 in that. Okay, make sense? <coughs> so at this point, we're gonna introduce the formal notation that goes with this idea of the intersection of two sets and the union of two sets, uh, which we've, till now, we've done kind of informally. Let's take a look at the explore though, before we do. Given the number in set A is X, and the number in set B is Y, and the number in A and B prime, which means not A and B, OK? 
okay, is the empty set, and the number in U, the universal set, is Z, and sets A and B are subsets of U, how can you determine whether sets A and B are disjoint or overlap? So what this is asking is, does it look like this? Or does it look like this? So we know that inside A there are x, right? I mean, here we could just label this. That's x and that's y. And we know that inside U is z. So what's the condition where this would be true? When it says A and B is A and B prime is an empty set, that means that there's nothing that's in A and B. Okay, so yeah, so let's figure out what A and B prime. Let's, let's start with this set here. Let's shade in A and B prime. Okay, so what for this one, which one is A and B? In both A and B, there's nothing, okay? So there's nothing that's together, which means that A and B prime then is, yeah, basically everything that's in U. So it leaves A and B untouched, right? So in this one, if we said, well, if X plus Y was equal to Z, then we know they're disjoint, right? They have no overlap if x plus y is equal to z because we know that the red area here is empty. Okay, so there's nothing in the red area, right? There's no, none of the z things that there are in the red area. Now, if we go to this guy here where it's overlapping, so if we say not a and b, so what's a and b? Yeah, so A and B is this guy here. So not A and B then is everything other than that. So there is some overlap here, right? That's X, that's Y, but there's probably something in here. So if x plus y is greater than z, because we've counted an area twice, right? Once as part of x and once, or sorry, once as part of a and once as part of b. So if <coughs> this is true, then we know that these sets uh, do overlap, right? So if they're disjoint, x plus y will equal z, and if they're not disjoint, then x plus y will be greater than z, okay? And again, just because we've counted something twice, right, it would be like, doing the, the hockey was 20 and then it was 14 and saying that's 34 when there's not, you know, 34. Right? We, we had 15, the 5, and the 9. There were really 29 in there. Okay, anyways, let's clean this up. It's all gone. Jackie is a zookeeper. She's responsible for feeding any baby animal that cannot be fed by its mother. She needs to feed a baby raccoon every two hours and a baby lemur every three hours. She uses a 24-hour clock to plan the feeding. Okay, so, you know, ultimately <laughs> cute baby raccoon, right? Well, baby animals are very cute. However, anybody has a raccoon problem in their neighborhood, you don't think raccoons are all that cute. Well, I don't think in Calgary we have a lot of raccoons, so. It's a big problem back east, right? I mean, because they get into everything, and they're able to get into lots of things. They can pick locks. There's a lot of pets near Fish Creek. Are there some down in Fish Creek? Yeah, I've seen a bunch in my backyard. How'd they get out here? I mean, I don't think they're... Anyway, so what we want to figure out is, at what times will Jackie need help to feed the raccoon and the lemur, right? When is there going to be an overlap in feeding times? So, we're going to let set T represent all the hourly times from 1 to 24. We're using 27, 1, 2, 3, so 0, 100, right? But we'll just call it 1. <coughs> so, let's write out set T. 1, 2, 3, 4. Up to 24, right? Just using a bit of a shorthand here, right? The three dots, dot, 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 24. Uh, let R represent times for every two hours up to 24. So what's in R? Two, four, six, eight. Okay, so two, four, six, pattern continues. The three dots just say this pattern is going to continue, right? And what's in S? Okay. 
So the universal set is the numbers 1 through 24, right? Each one representing a time. The set R is the even numbers 2 through 24. The set uh, S is the multiples of 3, starting with 3. Okay, so uh, represent the sets T, R, and L using a Venn diagram. Place the feeding times in the correct regions. Okay, I need some blank space here to do this. Because in this case, we are actually putting numbers in, right? So, I don't know. I guess this is about as big an area as I can. Okay, so this is uh, Raccoon. And this is Lemur. And that's the times. So where does 1 o'clock go? Okay, so outside the circles. Where does 2 o'clock go? Just raccoon or raccoon and lemur? Just raccoon. Okay, three o'clock? Four o'clock? Five o'clock? Six o'clock? In the middle. Seven o'clock? Eight o'clock? Nine o'clock? Ten o'clock? Okay, so far so good? Makes sense, right? So basically, any multiple of two is going in the raccoon circle. Any multiple of three is going inside the lemur circle. And anything that's a multiple of both two and three, so divisible by two and three, goes in the overlap. And anything that is neither a multiple of two nor a multiple of three goes in the, in the box, right? But outside the circles. Okay, so 10, so 11, 12. 12 is a multiple of two and three, right? Uh, 13, so 13, neither. 14 is even. 15, that's a multiple of 3. 16, even. 17, neither. 18, it's divisible by 2 and 3. 19, prime. 20, even. 21, multiple of 3. 22, even. 23, prime. 24, a uh, multiple of 2 and 3. Okay, does that make sense? Would you be able to do that on a test? Okay, so if I gave this exact question, you know, I might well do, but who knows. Um, you know, certainly it would be fair game. It's like, hey, we did it in class. So. Uh, all right, now, I don't want to move this, so I'm just going to borrow a little bit. Uh, so we've done B. C. Represent the sets. T. L. R. He's been done that. Place feeding times. We've done that. List the elements in the intersection of R and L. So now there's a definition at the bottom of page 22 in green, right? Which is intersection. An intersection uses a symbol which looks like an upside down U. Um, and it's given to you on the formula sheet, right? So it'll give you the upside down U, and next to it, it will say intersection. And you need to know what intersection is. So it's uh, list the elements in the intersection. So the intersection is the set of elements that are common to two or more sets. In set notation, A intersect B, that's how you read it, right? Intersect, upside down U denotes the intersection of sets A and B. For example, if A is 1, 2, 3, and B is 3, 4, 5, then A intersect B is 3. What's our intersection set here? Okay, so we would say R intersect L is equal to the set 6, 12, 18, and 24. Okay, that's our intersection. So when is she going to need help feeding them? 6, 12, 18, and 24, right? Because they both need to be fed at that time. That'll probably answer some question way further on. But, uh, list the elements in R slash L. You'd think they would define that somewhere in here, eh? But they don't. So R slash L. Which way is the slash? That means R minus L. If 
which means take away all of the elements from R that are also in L. Okay, so we take R, which is this circle here, right? And we subtract from that. It's not subtract in the sense of, you know, take away the numbers. It's take away those elements, right? Take away the elements that are also in L. So that's this. So R slash L will be, let me do this this way. So this guy here is r slash l, right? r minus l, that slice. So it is, did they ask us to list them? That's because I just hit something. Uh, list the elements in r slash l. OK, so what are the elements in r slash l? Okay, 2, 4, 8, 9, 10, 14, 22. Okay, list the elements in L slash R. What's L slash R? Yeah, it's the way of saying only R. So R slash L is really the way of saying only in R. And L slash R is the way of saying only in L, right, and not shared with any other set. So only in the set R, but not in any other set. Uh, only in the set L, but not in any other set. Okay, let's scroll down. And I guess that's it. Oh, wait, is there more? Hang on. Oh, there's some here. The F. The set of times that belong to either a feeding schedule every two hours or a feeding schedule every three hours forms the union of sets. I'm just going to clear this out. You've got it written down somewhere, right? Hey, go. Don't need you. Go away. Um, okay, so let's take a look at these definitions. This is one major reason we did it out of the book is they've got all these pictures. I didn't want to draw them. So, <clears throat> notation. In set notation, A intersect B, the upside down U, is read as the intersection of A and B, or A intersect B. It denotes the elements that are common to A and B. It's the overlap. It's where the two Venn diagrams overlap, right? The two sets overlap. And of course, we can have more than two sets, right? It could be three sets, it could be four sets, five sets. Um, so it's the shaded region in, in there, the one that's kind of purpley, I guess, because it's both blue and red. Okay, the one that's green, because who knows why it looks green, because, but you're right, it does look more green. A U B is read as the union, so the way I remember that, well, you don't have to remember it, because it's on your formula sheet, right? But it'll be union. So I just think of union as uniting, right? Bringing everything together. You're forming the union of the two sets. It denotes all elements that belong to either A or B or both. So the union is everything in A and B, right? But not including stuff that's outside. Oh, so, so we're just talking like parts of the. Yeah, so here we're talking about only the overlapping region, right? This is the intersection. So A intersect B, it's where they overlap, right? Where they intersect and each the other. Union is the a union B is everything that's in A or B or both. So if you were doing numbers, you'd take this number plus this number plus this number, right? So in A alone, so think of hockey, it was 15 plus 9 plus 5. Okay, giving us the 29, not the 34, right? Because there were never 34. A slash B <coughs> is rated as A minus B. It denotes the elements that are in set A but not in set B. So we've got three cases, right? If B is a subset of A, you're just removing that subset. So you think back to yesterday when we did those 30 numbers, right? We had 15 and 30, the multiples of 15, you'd be pulling away that subset. If they are disjoint, then really it's just A, right? Because you don't, you're not taking anything away. There is nothing that is common. And if they overlap, then you're taking away the overlap and leaving just A, right? So 
A minus B says just A, right? Like only A, not A and B, right? Only hockey, not hockey and soccer. Uh, go ahead. So the set of times that belong to either a feeding schedule of every two hours or a feeding schedule of every three hours form the union of the sets R and L, right? So it's either in A or B or both, right? In other words, it'd be a list of every time that she has to get up and, and feed or, you know, has to take action, as in has to go feed. So if we do R, U, L, so it'd be two, three, four, six, eight, nine, ten, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24. Okay, so that's everything that's in either circle R or circle L or both. Right. What's R U L complement? It's the ones we wrote in the box, but that weren't in either circle, right? It's the rest of the universe. The rest of the universe. So all the other times. So 1, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. Right. So those are the times at which you could look at the clock and say, I'm going to do this hour. Right? Like 1 o'clock. I don't want to do it. 5 o'clock. I'm going to stay in bed here. 7 o'clock. Yeah. So complete each statement with and or or. The set R intersect L consists of the elements in set R. Uh, both. Okay. And. and set L, so both, right, which is and. The set R union L consists of the elements in set R. Or. or. So remember. And is very restrictive, right? Because in other words, you have to belong to both sets, right? You've got to belong to the raccoon feeding time and the lemur feeding time, which is going to be the fewest number of elements. Or is all inclusive, right? It's like I'm feeding the raccoon or the lemur, right? And that's R or L. And when do I need help? I need help when I'm doing um, R upside down U L. Yeah, the intersection, right? Yeah. The, very, the restrictive set, the one that's going to happen the least, which is, you know, at 6, 12, 18, and 24. The even multiples of 3. Yeah, the even multiples of 3. So something that's, that's divisible by 2 and also divisible by 3. Basically meaning divisible by 6. Right. So Because we're not dealing with 2 or 3. Uh, reflect it. Okay, have you got all that down? Or, I mean, you don't need, you know, if you, you can always replay this if you need to look at it again. It's just any time I move, the stuff doesn't, it's not a notebook file where it moves with it, it just sort of stays where it is. Um, explain whether you agree or disagree with the following statement. The union of any two sets is like the addition of two numbers. So that R U L is equal to the number, oh, sorry, the number in the union of R and L is the number in R plus the number in L. Do you agree? Yeah, yes. So that means that the hockey and the soccer, the hockey union with the soccer would be 20 hockey and 14 soccer, which is 34. Agree? No. No. So what's happened if you do that? If you just add the number in R and the number in L, what have you done that you shouldn't have done? You got over the limit. You didn't intersect. Yeah, you, you've added the intersection twice, right? You took that overlap and you counted it once as part of R, which you should, and you counted it once as part of L, which again you should if you're just looking for the number of hockey or just looking for the number of soccer. So what we have to do is say that the number in the union is the number in R plus the number in L minus the number in R 
intersect, actually. So the union is adding together, right? Union is like adding, it's like or, make it a bigger number. Intersection is is and, right? It's like it's got to be, so it's a smaller number because it's got to be in both. So the problem is we counted this area here once as part of this, and then we counted it again as part of that, so we're going to subtract it off once so that it only gets counted once. Yep. The upside down union is intersection. And the intersection is the overlap. It's where they intersect. Okay, so where the two cross each other. Is that the formula sheet? It does say intersection. Yeah, it's not going to say what the intersection is, right? But yeah. So formula sheet has, you know, the U right side up U, and it says union. It has the upside down U. It says intersection. It's got the prime, which says complement, and it's got uh, the slash or the brace bracket saying empty set, I think. Okay. And it's got the subset. It's got the sideways U for subset. You know, like the examples where we did where there was nothing in the U? Yeah, nothing else. Yeah. So does that make U an empty set? No. U is everything. So everything's in U. It's just there's nothing that's outside of A or B in that case, right? Mm -hmm. So like, how do we find an empty set? Uh, an empty set would just be basically a blank box. You would list nothing in it, right? It's empty. So empty sets are pretty boring, but they but they could be a subset, right? If we want. So um, here's the case. Like, so what if we had this? What's the intersection of A and B? An empty set. It's the empty set, right? So if they're disjoint, the intersection is empty, right? There isn't one. How many things are there in the intersection of A and B? None. None. So if R and L were disjoint sets, then this would be equal to 0, but the formula would still stand, right? Because you could add up the number in, so I can add up the number in A plus the number in B and subtract from that the number in A intersect B, right, which is 0. So that's fine, right? Formula stands, you got one formula, you don't have to worry about it. If they're disjoint sets, the intersection will just be 0. And, but I don't have to say, hey, there's two different formulas here, right? Uh, write a formula for the number in L, but not in L minus R, the number of elements that are in set L, but not in set R. So what's the number in L minus R? So it's obviously the number in L, but what do we have to get rid of? Minus the number in R. Minus the number that are in the intersection, right? So in, in pictures, that's R, that's L, it's saying you want to get rid of this and all of that, right? So now all we want to count is just L. So we're going to take away the intersection. <coughs> so we get the ones that are only in, in L. Example. So we'll take a look at example one, and that then what I like to do is just read through the other examples, um, and then start working on the problems. And then tomorrow is just a work period on this, right? So yeah, I was kind of surprised too when I looked at it. I thought, wow, you know, like how are, how are they going to get through all these things tonight for period one? And then I looked at the outline and said, oh wait, tomorrow is a work period on this stuff, right? Because and it takes work, so. You really do need to use it, okay? And you, you need to do all of these. You really need to read through the examples carefully and take a look at them. And if something in there doesn't make sense, then just call me over and say, hey, can you explain this? I do not understand what's going on here. And then you need to do all the problems because you can't be seeing this stuff for the first time on the diploma or, or working these types of questions for the first time, either on the test on Wednesday or on the diploma. It just, they just, nothing's going to make any sense then, right? You just have a jumbled up idea of what's going on. So you need to work through them so that you're really sitting there and that, you know, union becomes fixed in your head. What the heck is a union of sets? What is an intersection of sets? 
What does that mean? What is if I go L minus R? What if I go the complement of L minus R? Like, you know, that gets into really weird stuff, right? Because we gotta figure out, well, which one is L minus R, first of all, and then the complement is everything else, right? If I wanna shade that stuff. Anyway, so if you're not familiar, here's a deck of cards, right? There are four suits, clubs, spades, hearts, or diamonds. There are 13 ranks, we call them the ranks. Right, from ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then jack, queen, and king. These guys are called face cards because they have faces. And aces do not have faces, so an ace is not a face card. There are a total of 12 face cards in a deck of cards. Um, there are six red face cards and six black face cards. And I wonder why I'm mentioning face cards at all because it doesn't come in in this question. But <clears throat> when we start to move into counting and probability, we're going to use a deck of cards because everybody's kind of familiar with the deck of cards. And if not, there it is. Get familiar with it. Um, and when we do probability, we can talk about probability from different poker hands, right? Like how, why, why are the poker hands ranked the way they are? Why is a royal flush up at the top and you know a, a pair is down at the bottom? We're going to get to learn how to play poker. Uh, yeah, you can learn that on your on your own online. But, um, you know, if if you learn not to gamble out of these coming units, that's a good thing. So, you know, because the house always wins, and otherwise it's probably a scam anyway. So they're they're indicting people down in the states for these like PokerStars.net and all these online poker sites that uh, turns out it was a bit of a pyramid scheme. They were just using the money coming in to pay the new people or the old people, and eventually everybody found out, oh, I have no money in this now because they've gone and absconded with it. Anyways, describe set C, S, H, and D in the universal set for this situation. Well, I mean, the, the set C is the set of clubs, and S is the set of spades, and, and so on. You know, they talk down here about drawing a card from a deck of cards, but the universe is really just all of the available cards, and there are 13 spades and so on. So number of clubs, how many clubs? 13. Spades, 13. hearts, 13. diamonds, 13. and the number in the universe? 52. 52. Describe the union of S and H. What is the union of S and H? Okay, so there are 26 of them, but what is the union of them? What does it mean? Okay, so it's the hearts and spades. Yes, yeah, the hearts and the spades, right? So it's like you took the deck of cards and you said, okay, I'm here are all the hearts and spades together, and then here's the rest, and there are 26 that are hearts and spades. What's the intersection of spades and hearts? There isn't one. There isn't one, because you cannot be both a spade and a heart, right? So those are called mutually exclusive kind of introducing some terminology which we'll come back to later. But it means mutually exclusive just means you're either a spade or you're a heart, you can't be both, right? If I said, um, a, you know, black face cards or something, well, then you could be a club and a black face card, or you could be a spade and a black face card. So you can be both black and a face card, um, but you cannot both be a spade and a heart, okay? You're one or the other. Um, so the number then, if there are none of them, the number is zero. Determine whether the events that are described by sets S and H are mutually exclusive, so they are, and they are also disjoint, because there's no overlap, right? So we have to draw them as separate circles. If you're in this circle, you're a spade. If you're in this circle, you're a heart. There is no overlap. I can't, you know, I mean, I could draw this, but then this has to be empty, right? There's nothing in that's a member of both sets. So if that was the case, then instead we would just draw this. Okay? And if the Venn diagrams are drawn like this, then they are what is called mutually exclusive, just meaning that that can't happen, right? It can't, both, both things can't happen at the same time. What's the complement of spades union uh, hearts? So if I put together the spades and the hearts, what's left? Yeah, so the complement, so S, S, U, H prime is really equal to C, U, D, right? It's the, the union of clubs and diamonds, right? Because that's what's left, everything else. Um, 
it's kind of nice with cards because you know, you're not worried about an intersection, right? There's no overlap if you're just talking about suits. And you know, here's some answers. And again, so when you're looking through the answers for the other examples, you know, they give explanations of what they're doing here, right? So union of spades and hearts consists of 26 cards. It's either a spade or a heart. So remember, the word associated with um, union is or, spade or heart, okay? So if, if it's a spade, it, can, it qualifies. If it's a heart, it qualifies, one or the other or both, right? If it's a spade and a heart together, which doesn't happen. And the, the word are associated with intersection is and, so give me all the cards that are both spades and hearts. Uh, okay, there aren't any, right? Oh, there's something here. Uh, Petra thinks that the number of spades plus the number of hearts is the number in the union. Is that true? The number of spades? How many spades are there? Thirteen. How many hearts are there? Thirteen. How many spades or hearts are there? Three. So that is true, right? It's true because the intersection contains nothing, right? There's nothing in the intersection. So it brings up an alternate form of the formula, right? If you know that there's no overlap between the two sets, you don't need to subtract the overlap, which would just be zero anyways. Okay, so what you want to do, what I'd like you to do, uh, read through the rest of the examples Make sure that they make sense to you. Think about it before you look at the solution that's being given. Sort of think, okay, how would I handle this? Then look at the solution. Take some time, read through those. If you could do that by the end of this class, that would be great. And then tomorrow will just be a work period on you sitting in and working through the questions, okay? And you really have to on these, okay? I've never said this before. I think I said with sinusoidal, you probably should. And it paid off, right? I think those of you that did those questions you know, looked at it and said, so the, you know, these four day units, you know, pay off, but you just gotta, you just gotta do the, the work. And some of you will be a lot stronger in this unit than a lot of the more, you know, mathematical ones, because, you know, if you're more oriented towards humanities and stuff like that, this is really along that line of thinking, right? It's more critical, logical thinking about, well, where do things fit? Where do I place them? And what does this mean? Okay, 